Hi students, Mr. C here. In our next step, uh, I'm going to show you how to properly stain our pieces for our structure for the epoxy wood creation table. But before I do that, I'd like to explain a couple things that I did to prop the material before the stain goes on. Um, with every one of these pieces here that goes to the, the structure, any place there's a glue joint, I've taped off because I do not want any of the stain to get in that section. Okay, because after my staining, I'm also going to top coat these. I prefer not to top coat a, or a spray finish on a project unless it's in pieces where I can lay it flat. I find that I get a better um, surface quality out of the finish when I do that because clearly it's far easier to get the finish on a flat surface when I'm just spraying that than it is if I have a piece at a 90 degree angle. Okay, yes, this can be achieved, but it's better for us to go ahead and just spray a flat surface, right? So what I did was is I, I took each one of these pieces and I sanded them with the coarse grit 80 and 100, then my middle grit 120, 150, then my last two grits 180 and 220. Of course, my last grit of 220 I did by hand with a block, so that way I don't end up with any marks that are left by a sanding machine, okay? So once I did that, I blew everything off with compressed air. Then the manufacturer of the stain that I'm using, it's a gel stain, suggests that you wipe down the surface with a mineral spirit. So I did that 24 hours ago. So once that's all dried, I went ahead and I taped off all of the areas that I'm going to be uh, using an adhesive and gluing together the parts. So that's what the green tape is. You can use any type of tape. You don't have to use a frog tape or a painter's tape. I find that's easier to pull off later, less likely to leave uh, the um, residue from the adhesive on that. But what I did was is I made sure I have everything in front of me before I start this process, okay? I have a garbage can off to the side. I have a tray to hold my stain. I have foam applicators. I have two extra shop towels to um, wipe off the excess stain with and then I have one can of stain where there's a little bit left in here and then I have a full can of stain and then I have of course my gloves to make sure I can protect <clears throat> my hands from getting stain all over them and I do have my safety glasses so <clears throat> everything's prepped everything's ready to go what I'd like to do is just show you just basically, it's not a big secret of how to go ahead and stain your project. Now, I cannot stain all the surfaces because clearly like if you see this piece here, it has to sit on something up off the um, drop cloth. And I don't wanna have marks left where these two, these pieces are that are holding it up. They're called stickers. So I wanna do the top of this, the edge and the other edge and I'm not gonna do the bottom right now. I'll wait the 12 to 24 hours for it to dry, then I'll do that surface. So you're gonna see me do part of this, but not completely all of it, just so you have the understanding of how this works, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is, I have two sets of rubber gloves here. I'm just gonna take one set and set them here, just in case I poke a hole or um, something happens in the rubber gloves. Okay, and then what I'll do is, is I have shaken the can. Like I said, it is a gel stain, so it's not gonna run as much. Now I have my plastic container here. All right. And I do have a backup just in case I don't have enough in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some of this gel stain inside here. I'm going to put the lid back on this, not tight, I'm going to set it in there, and I'll set you in the center of the bench, that way it doesn't get knocked over. This, this can still is completely sealed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foam applicator, foam brush, and I'm going to start putting some stain on just before the end, wipe this on with the grain. And I come back and lay the brush the other way. If 
but never from the end, okay? Because it'll cause a run down that side, all right? So I'm gonna hold it on its end. Nice thing about this piece, these pieces here is that because the shape of them, I'm going to have the opportunity to just to go ahead and do all four sides. Almost done putting the coat of the gel stain on the surface. Alright, so this one's been completely coated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shop towel, I'm going to wipe off the excess. So you can still see the grain. I don't want this to be like a paint, like a latex paint, so you don't see the grain any longer. That's not what we're looking for here. As you can see, taking off all the excess off this. So what I'm going to do, actually with this one, is I'm going to take this one here, take this one, place this on here, let that dry in that spot. Now I'm just do the same thing essentially with this piece. <clears throat> so like I'm starting with the easiest pieces first, just to get used to the material and how it glides on to the surface of the material. This happens to be uh, black ash. And the stain goes on here really, really nicely. Um, the reason why they say to cover or wipe down the surface with the mineral spirits um, before application is so that the stain will glide a little bit easier along the surface. I find that um, sanding it to 220 grit and having it perfectly sanded probably helps the most, but um, if that's what the manufacturer suggests, and the, this, a rep this is a very reputable company um, that manufactured this stain, um, I'll just follow their instructions. We're trying to make sure that we have a black surface, right? But we don't want so much material or so much stain on here, gel stain, that you don't see the grain any longer. That's not what you want. What you want 